Hey what's up creators today, we're going to be showing you how we can set up this cinematic inside of Unreal Engine 5. For this we're going to be introducing you to Sequencer inside of Unreal Engine, showing you how you can build shots for the film industry or how you can just build cinematics or game trailers for your video game. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into Unreal Engine 5 and get you started. Okay, so the very first thing that we need is some assets that we can use for this project. Now for this, we're going to be using the automotive winter scene as our environment. So what I want you to do is go ahead and find this on the Epic Games Marketplace, link in the description, and add it into your project. For this, we're also going to be using the animal variety pack as it is going to give us a whole bunch of animals along with animation. And it also comes with some really, really nice groom with this. With that being said, again, go ahead and add this to your project. Once that's done, hop over to Unreal Engine 5 and we're going to get started. So now that we're inside of Unreal Engine and we've got our assets, we can find these in the content browser in the bottom left hand corner. In our automotive winter scene, if we go to our maps folder, we can find our ice road, which is what we're going to be using to use as our environment. So what I want you to do is navigate to content, automotive winter scene, maps, and then open up ice road. Once you've opened this, you are going to see something which is going to look like this. We've got a nice icy road, we've got some mountains, and it really does set the scene with this. And as you saw in the demo, we have our shot, which is kind of set up so it looks like this. So we kind of got this nice view of the road going behind us. And we've also got the fox and it's going to kind of run up to that road. What we're then also going to do is in our animal variety pack, we're going to go to our fox folder. And then we're just going to go to meshes and we're going to bring in our SK underscore fox. SK underscore fox is our skeleton. The skeleton is going to have bones with this fox and what that means is we're going to be able to have this animate. With this skeleton that we've just brought into our scene, this is essentially something which can be animated. It's got bones and it can move. And with this fox, we can apply a whole bunch of animations to it, whether it's walking, idling, sitting down, posing. To be able to do this, it's got to be a skeletal mesh, which is where the SK underscore comes from. So with that being said, let's hop back in and we'll get this animated and we'll get you into sequence. So back inside of Unreal Engine, what we're going to do is we're just going to roughly place our fox just before the edge here. With our shot, we're going to have our fox run up to the edge, then it's going to stop and it's going to just hold a pose right here, which is going to be nice and simple. So to do that, that's where we're going to be using Unreal Engine sequencing tool or keyframing tool. To access this, we can go to the top left hand corner and we can add what's called a level sequence. I want you to go ahead and press that and you can save this anywhere you like. For me, just for best practice, I'm going to right click in the content folder and then I'm going to add a new folder with the name shots. Once I've done this, I'm then just going to save this as shot 001. So go ahead and do the same thing. Shot underscore 001. And then press save. What we've just created here is a sequence file. A sequence is going to have lots and lots of different tracks in there and assets, and we're going to be able to keyframe all of the values. So we can take the fox that we've got, we can put it onto our animation track, and then we can animate values for things like the location, the rotation, or we can even keyframe what animations should be playing. With that being said, let's go ahead and get these tracks added in. So inside of Unreal Engine, with our sequencer interface, by default, it is going to be in a window that looks a little bit like this, where it's popped out. Now, if you're familiar with any kind of keyframing software like Premiere Pro or alike, you might be used to having this down at the bottom as it gives you a lot more space to work with. I definitely advise you do the same. To do that, again, we're just taking this sequence and then we're just grabbing this little tab and bringing it down to the content browser just like that. Once we've done this, what we can do is we can start taking elements and adding it into the track. Don't worry if you're not too familiar with sequence just yet, we're going to be breaking all of this down as we go into it. 
But what I want you to do to start with is just figure out how to add something to a track. To do that, we select our actor in our scene. Then what we can do is right click here, actor to sequence and choose the object. Because we've got it selected, it's going to be showing up at the top here. So what I want you to do is go ahead and press that. Now we can see in our list of tracks here on the left, we've got SK underscore Fox and we've got animations and we've got transform information. And I now have a track that I can scrub through and I can add various different keyframes to if I wanted to. So at this point, what I want you to do then, now we have our Fox on here. What I want you to do is let's just plan out the movement for this. So first things first, I'm going to take my Fox from the location that it's in here. And then with that, I'm just going to be moving it over to the edge. So the way to do this is first and foremost, we're going to just get in here and get our starting location. The starting location for this is going to be roughly here. Just make sure that your feet are aligned in the way that you want it to. Then what we're going to do is we are going to be playing some very simple animations. And to do this in our animation track here for our Fox, what we can do is we can go to animation and we can choose any one of these animations to play. Now, what I'm going to be doing is simply telling it to run. And if I was to press play now with our run on there, you can see our Fox is going to run. Then what I can do with this is I can tie the movement to the animation speed that we've got here. So at this point, we have a track with the Fox. We added a keyframe for our animation, which is just a singular animation just played once. Then what we can do is we can go down to the location now and start moving this Fox so it runs over to the edge. To do this, we're going to go to location and what we're going to be doing is making sure there is keyframes on the X, Y, and Z axes for our location at the start at zero, zero frames. And we do this just by pressing the little plus next to each of these. Then what I want you to do is move the playhead to the new time on here, then go ahead and add the keyframes for each of these. And what I want you to do is just select the keyframe you want to edit. And then with this, just figure out which direction you're moving it in. Now with that, you saw me click and edit the Z axis. The one that I actually want is my X and my Y. So I can click on that. I can then in the sequencer down here, I can move it along that. So I want to move it towards the edge there. And then also on the Y, I can choose where the Fox is going to go to. And we can just keep clicking on these keyframes to move these to the correct location. So you can see here, it's kind of walking diagonally this way. And if I take the playhead back, I can kind of test that. And it's really, really straightforward. So you can see that's quite a quick fox, but it's definitely working in the way that we want it to. If you wanted to, you could add more animations into this sequence. What I want you to do is go ahead and see if you can find something for a idol. And with this, it now snaps from running to idling. And if you wanted to, you can blend them by simply clicking on those and overlapping them. And what you should have then is something that looks like that. And it doesn't have to be the idol there. You can use a different animation if you want to. So the animation that I'm going to use is if I go to animation, I can use go to rest and I can just search for this by the animation name and use anim underscore Fox go to rest. And if I just drag that, so it's just up against my Fox run, you can see it plays the animation. He stops and then he goes to sit down. And again, if I wanted to blend this animation, I just make them overlap by clicking and dragging there. So I'm just going to press play. He goes to sit down and we're all good with that. Now, what you're also going to see with our Fox here is by the time he gets here, because the elevation has changed, he's actually in the floor. We don't want that. So with your Z value, just make sure that it's in the correct position at the end there. And what you should have now is your Fox running. He goes to sit down and we're good to go. And lastly, what I'm going to do is just have our fox sitting down so it doesn't end so abruptly. The name of the animation for this is fox underscore resting. Then I'm just going to drag it up, blend it in just like that. And now we have the fox run, goes to sit down, and then he's just chilling. 
So with that, we now have a very simple fox animation here. Now, there's a lot to take in there. I know we've been going for about sort of 10 minutes there, but at this point, we now have the fox. We have our environment. We know how to add keyframes for the location. We know how to add keyframes for animation. Let's move on to showing you how we can set up a camera now so we can focus in on that fox and render it out as a movie. So back inside of Unreal Engine, setting up the camera could not be easier. All we need to do is inside of here, we go over to the create a new camera and set it as a current track button. Conveniently, it's got a camera icon. Then once we press this, you're gonna see, we're gonna automatically be piloting a camera. And with this, we can kind of position this by just moving our W, A, S, and D keys. And I'm gonna position it so it looks like this. So we have the fox coming in from the right into the center of the frame. And then what I want you to do is we're just gonna be adding in transform keys for our location, rotation, and scale. To do this, instead of going through and doing location manually, what we can do is we can go to, we can go to transform here and we can press add a new keyframe and press enter. What that's gonna do is just lock our camera into position so it's always there. Then what we're gonna do with this is we're just going to be adding in a keyframe for the focal distance because we can see our fox is not in focus right now. So what I want you to do is go to your manual focus distance here, press the keyframe icon there, and then what we can do is we can just take that manual focus distance and we can focus that in to whichever point that we want. Now I can test this by simply moving my fox in here and just adjusting that keyframe until it works. And you can see the fox is in frame there. If you get an extra keyframe there because we have this scrubber at a different position, we can just click that keyframe and we can press delete on the keyboard to remove that. Again, if you need to just refocus that, just click on it, focus in on the fox, so I'm just gonna dial that in until I get to a value that I'm happy with. And now you can see when my fox comes in, he's in focus and he's doing what we want. What you can also do with this is we can also add keyframes for our focal length as well, which is how wide or how narrow the camera is. And having a more sort of higher focal length camera is going to allow us to get a bit more depth. So I'm gonna set this to 50 and I'm going to press play, I'm going to press enter to add that keyframe. And then with this, you can see now when the fox comes in, you've got a lot more depth from the background. You may or may not need to add in a, another sort of focus thing as it moves here because we want the fox to be perfectly in focus there. It's entirely up to you, but what you should be taking away from this is just some very simple skills to figure out how we can get different tracks and different values being edited. But what you should have now is we've got our fox, we've got a very simple camera, and all of this is able to play. Now, the last two things that I wanna show you before we end this video is how we can animate the camera movement and how we can render this as a movie. To do the camera movement, it's really straightforward. Under our Cine Camera Actor track here, we can go to rotation. And with this, what we can do is we can just add keyframes for our camera rotation if we want to. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a camera your keyframe here. And what I can do is I can click on that and I can move it into position. So I can have this camera your focused in on the fox there and it's just gonna animate between my two different points. And I can do that as quick or as fast as I like. So now we have a very simple fox animation. We can also do the same thing for the location of the camera too. So what I might wanna do is move this at the same time. And to do that, I'm just gonna add a new keyframe on the Y for the camera and I'm just gonna move it along just like that. So it's going more towards this way. Then with my yaw, I'm gonna click on that keyframe and just, just bring it in on the fox. 
So now what we have happening is the fox coming in from one side and the camera is kind of tracking that quite nicely. And if I want to, I can delay those camera animations there. So it's a li little bit more slow, a little bit more cinematic, and I can keep moving this until I get to a point that's comfortable. So you really can go as wild as you like. Just keep going on on these keyframes, keep adjusting them until you get to a value that you like. Just remember if you're doing stuff like this where we're doing keyframe work and we're moving the location of the camera, we also need to go up and change that focus distance. Okay, at this point we should now have our fox sequence, animation, environment, cameras, everything looking great. You can see a little preview of what I've got now. So after you've finished finessing your track and your cameras and your animation to get it looking exactly how you want it to, what we can do is render this to a video file really, really easily. Let's hop into Unreal Engine and we're going to do that in about 30 seconds. So going into Unreal Engine, a couple of things then. To render this as a track, we need to make sure the end point of our track here is set to the end of our final animation. We then can go ahead and go over to the clapperboard icon here to render this movie as a sequence. We choose the image output. I'm going to be using AVI. You can have an image sequence if you want to. You can also choose the resolution. I'm going to render this in 1920 by 1080 p You can render this in 4K or any other resolution that you need. You can also choose a custom frame rate as well. If you want to set this to 30 FPS, you absolutely can do that. Choose the output directory here, and once you're happy with that, go ahead and press Capture Movie. Make sure you save everything that you've done, and then what you're going to see in the top left hand corner is a very little preview of our sequence going on and all of the magic happening. So that's it, we now have used Sequencer for the very first time. And at this point, you should have a environment, we should have a character or character style thing with animations playing and camera animations going. And also we've learned how to render this out so we can build cinematics for ourselves. If you wanna learn a little bit more about Sequencer, be sure to let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to share your work in our Discord. If you want to help support more high quality training just like this, be sure to check out our Patreon page and unlock exclusive perks such as early access to our videos, live mentoring, and easy to use game templates all available on our Patreon. Links are in the description. That's it for now though, I hope you have enjoyed it. Stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out.